this book is the second translation um, that I published. The first one was by Radhika, so I'm, I'm just really, really honored. Um, so I would like to just say a few things. Um, first, Iwana is a poet, translator, and playwright. And her book, Triumph of the Water Witch, uh, Blood Axe Books, was shortlisted for the Widenfield Prize, Oxford. Um, Adam also trans, uh, translated uh, that book and many others with Iwana. Uh, she was Romania's cultural counselor in D Washington, D.C. from 1992 to 1996, and a Fulbright program director in Bucharest. And Adam, of course, we talked about how many translations um, that he has published, and he has won numerous awards. He has also been awarded a Fulbright, a Rockefeller, Arts Council of England, New York State Arts Council, Academy of American Poets, Soros Foundation, Romanian Cultural Institute, and NEA for arts support for his literary activity, um, and many more, both their bios are just um, extensive. So rather than me like read more and more and more because they do have an awful lot. Um, so please um, check out their websites um, because it is uh, really something. And so with our program tonight, it'll be divided into three sections. You know, the first, um, they both will read, read from um, the book and then afterwards talk about the book. And then the third section will be um, a question and answer if any of you would like to um, talk to them about um, the book. Um, so I give you Iwana. I'm very happy to be here, thank you. Um, and uh, we have planned a little bit with Adam how to go about this. So maybe all of i don't know that all of you know the story this is a kind of a novel in verse because i'm a poet and this would have been stuff for a novel but i am a poet and so i brought it towards poetry and i think that this is quite a valid way to do it so let me tell you the story it does start uh, after the second world war Lavinia, the protagonist, is a recently widowed woman with two young daughters who moves from her city at a Black Sea to her husband's birth village in the Romanian Carpathians in North Montenia, that is to say south of Transylvania, a region called Muschel, famous for its, for its costumes. There she, the woman, uh, Lavinia, succeeds to raise her daughters through hard work as the village seamstress. Lavinia, an outsider in fact, also serves as a witness who gets to know everybody in the community and takes uh, in these many things happening around her. Um, this is a time of communist takeover of Eastern Europe. The new order deeply affected the traditional timeless lifestyle that had survived in the mountains. This is the rough story, and I wish to say something from the beginning. The book has a preface, which is wonderful. It is rich. It is informative, written by Adam Sorke. And now maybe we read Adam. Okay. Um, I, we've, Juana and I have talked about, we're going back and forth. So I'm going to start reading, and she will pick up, and we're going to kind of alternate. She'll also read a bit in Romanian. I'm going to start with the very beginning of the book, the prologue, from the prologue, because I think it sets up the kind of um, way in which Juana used vignettes and um, the interaction of characters, then with small poetic passages to, um, or lyrical passages as the book flows on. So, here we go. The, the woman approaches the seamstress's night table and the full length mirror where you can see yourself so clearly. How many people have so fine a mirror from the old days? In the other room, Lavinia is looking for the blouse that has to be fitted. Here the woman is alone, casting a critical eye on, 
at her image. I'm so ugly in this plain everyday dress. It's too old. A dark wave washes across her round eyes. Lodged in her memory, another face stares back, as far from truth as a body's shadow. Oh, what bad, cheap fabric. It's baggy and stretched. She examines herself in profile. What, um, I'm sorry, over one shoulder, her eyes sharp as those of a bird of prey, gives a tuck at her bra strap to lift her breasts, slicks her dyed raven black hair with a moist finger. Yes, she's kept traces of beauty. Oh, this dress, it ruins me. How are you, neighbor? Lavinia asks from the doorway. Good, good. We've had a few difficulties with the daughter. What can I say? The wedding, pretensions? as if you don't know how it is. Lavinia remains quiet, draping fleshly, freshly cut panels of black and red fabric on the woman's body. Lavinia doesn't know, no, doesn't know anything. Pinned together at last, the sleeve hides the woman's fleshy blue veined arms. May God give you a car heaped with good luck. Good luck, neighbor Huara. And then a shift in passage. The light, the still light from water and earth, light arching from mists, an ever purer voice, the clink of magic stones rolled by a god onto the riverbank in another world, the chimera of glowing fire above the silent living darkness of the orchard. Close your eyes tighter so as to see light's first growth, the still light from water and earth. And now I'm going to read this lyric in Romanian. It is like the beginning of the story, which is in lyrical key. Lumina înceată din apă și pământ, lumină, arcuire din neguri, glas mereu mai curat. Clinchetul pietrei magice rostogolită de zei pe malul râului în altă zare. Himera focului blând suitor, din bezna libezii tăcută și vie, închide neștiutorii ochi mai adânc spre a vedea creșterea din tâia luminii, lumină înceată din ape și pământ. I guess I'll, I'll go on to, we've chosen a couple of passages. This jumps ahead now to part of the story. I'm going to do one part and then I guess you pick up the second, right? Yes. This yes. is a different, this is a kind of vignette of village life that we go to. The woman walks barefoot very quickly to the pigsty, hunched over. She can hardly carry the cauldron she has just taken from the grate over the fire in the courtyard. Little croaking Andrian, dripping snot, mucus in the corner of his eyes, tangles himself in her skirts. The woman shrieks at him shrilly, pushing him aside with her knee, reaches the trough, trough and pours out the cauldron. The pig squeals and lumbers up to it, trembling. The woman pats it softly on the neck and coos at it. Then, more roughly to her son, Andrian, take care of Uncle Pandele's cow, that it doesn't knock over the, its fodder, God forbid. Gitsa, my baby doll, you beautiful boy. The pig has stepped with its forepaws into the trough and is busy eating, lost in the heart of paradise. <laughs> yes, and now, and now I will continue um, with another vignette which defines the protagonist. She practically almost never says yes. She has a kind of pensive halfway to say yes. She says in Romanian, mm, da. And uh, we had discussions, we, we, we discussed a lot about how to do it in English. So I'm going to read this about her in English. Hmm, da. Lavinia murmurs, stopping her words between her old sunken lips. Hmm, yes. In the chambers of her mind, she turns your words over, reckoning the full meaning of your life. She looks around like a white shadow neither stealthily nor directly ahead, just looking. 
she knows. Mm. Yes. What's living is sacred. So this was a vignette about the protagonist. Adam. Yeah, I know. The book, I, I, should, I think we have to say the book has more cohesion than it seems to. Um, and this, then in the way we're jumping through it, but we want to get, we want decided we wanted to give some of the kind of flavor of different passages. So I think the next thing is we're moving um, fairly far ahead in the book. It's, it's a scene with children, very short. This, the last part or the second major part called newcomers. Here. Children shake the ripe plum tree, laughing and shouting. The fruit drums against the ground. Lavinia bends down like an old woman to pick up a plum rolling on the cement, rusty gold. Then she looks behind her. The white house with its shingle roof seems to have sunken a little further into the ground. The dark door open the mouth of a sick animal. You're going to do the second, Juana. Um, oh, you want me? Uh, yes, I would. Yes. Okay, you want me to read that? Yes. <laughs> okay. I think you have to read it because of the, 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 the call. Uh -huh. I'll let you read that. Do you want me to read it, the English, and you can do that part? Uh, no, I mean, I didn't. Okay. Yes, I do the call. So here is, here is another vignette where a little boy comes and tells his mother that there are some hawks in the sky. This was a very interesting scene in a village because these women had such strong voices that they practically terrified these birds in the sky. So here is... I will also read it in, in, in Romanian after I read it in English. And here I tried to put on paper the local dialect, a kind of local sound. So, mother, mother, come quick, chase the hawks, two of them. They are after our chicks. Naishor bursts breathlessly into the house, his nose running. Uli, 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 uu! The woman shrieks with, uh, from the porch, so, soap suds up to her elbows. Uli -oo! She shrieks like a wild beast. In the sky, the birds, as if touched by a human hand, are startled, break their course, glide in wider circles higher above. They disappear beyond the horizon. And I'm going to read this in Romanian. And I never could pronounce like the local people, but I will try a kind of imitation for those who, who can speak Romanian. There will be a little change. Mică, mică, ești iute de roată cloncanii, doi cloncan după găinile noastre. Năvălește năișor în casă fără suflare. Uli, uli, u, țipă femeia ascuțit de pe sală cu clăbucii de săpun până la coate. Uliu, țipă ca o vietată sălbatică. În cer, păsările atinse parcă de mână de om, tresar, își frâng rotirea, lunecă în cercuri largi, mai sus, dispar la orizont. So that was this scene with a child. I think one of the things we did do, though, is we probably consciously or at least I did, downplayed some of the dialect that might have been put there in English. Because it's one, of the, one, of the more difficulty, one of the more difficult things in translation is to find a dialect that works without sounding like the dialect in another book or in another place in this country or uh, something that would displace what, we're, the, uh, what the book and where the book is, what the book is doing. So we, I, you know, I, kept it mostly, um, no, no local pronunciations, because in America we tend to do local, see local pronunciations um, as, as sort of regional. And that's not what was wanted here. Another passage, we're, um, we're jumping to the end of the book. This implies um, 
this passage kind of implies the way the book is going to end. I mean, Lavinia has come. This implies something else. It's, it's I don't know who the speaker is here. It's sort of general knowledge. It's, it's the village thinking about Lavinia. Lavinia um, is moving from the house at the very beginning. She takes over a house and she's moving into the house of the, was it the family and the husband of her daughter, Lena? And they're thinking, or thinking to themselves probably. How did her daughter manage to persuade Lavinia, you wonder? Only a day earlier, it seems, she had come home to the village, that younger one, Lena. True, true. You may stay by yourself a long time, but solitude will propel you into its opposite. Such an intelligent woman as she is, Lavinia. How could she be duped this way? Because the time was ripe. Like when the fruit has grown fully around on the unknowing branch. Um, I'm doing both, aren't I? Yes. Yeah, indeed. Why shouldn't you follow the world's way? Why not try to live in a real house? I guess I was... I think this may be... This may yeah. be because it's towards the end where life gets disintegrated, in fact. And so we try to give you some impression yeah. about the book through these few quotations. And, and this, these are what either people or she or all together are thinking. It goes on, who has come near me? Many have come near you. Near whom have I come? I no less than the prey of those around me, and they my prey. How has she been lured to leave her own place and fall for no reason at all into a stranger's hand? And she's in a cart advancing slowly. It sort of was the, picked up the image, you know, almost prefigured the image on the cover. All, all among the furniture and bundles, Lavinia is looking back at the house back down the wheel traces. I, I, I wish to refer to the picture a little bit. Those yeah. who are Romanian might notice something that this woman is not dressed like in the region that we speak about. Mm. She is from the northernmost part, from Maramures. The picture it, the picture is good for the book because it shows exactly this kind of traveling out, even of one's life. And it, it suggests it somehow. But it was made by um, Kathleen Laraya McLaughlin, uh, who was on a Fulbright, and she took these pictures in northernmost Romania as a, as a project for her Fulbright. And so it kind of warmed my heart to bring these forces together. Adam himself was a Fulbrighter when he started being a translator. That's true. It, it, it hooked me into changing my career entirely. This was the spring of 1981, and I joke that I'm a 39-year-old translator. So let me say that yeah. this book was, it's the translation of, um, of a work that I published in the 1980s in Romania and which um, was called Eclogue. Of course, that, that title, which um, means something idyllic, was a, was a kind of ironic title. Um, we uh, changed the title because it was so inexpressive somehow. And uh, while working with Adam, that was one of the most special um, experiences because any translation is practically the very best reading possible. And while I worked with Adam on this, I had a revelation that I could practically improve my original, which I did. And I am planning to uh, publish this book again in Romania as a new edition. The Romanian. In Romania. Yeah. 
And about a dialect, it is discreet enough also in the book, so I didn't insist too much on it being a dialect. Another thing is that standard Romanian practically was formed including this area. So it is not such a wild difference. It's more in the pronunciation, which me being a Transylvanian, in fact, and very Germanized, I was never able to really pronounce it. So, so we move to see, uh, if there are any questions now or... or um... Um, I mean, we're here, we're in, yeah. we haven't left no, you. No, no. Um, if you want to continue a little bit, if you want to open up Q&A, everybody unmute themselves if you want to ask a question to our guests. Should I be willing to answer uh, anything you have to ask them? I would like to ask a question if I can to begin. Um, it seems to me the most magical thing when it happens the way it should, and perhaps when it doesn't, is the purity of the word, the purity of the phrase, of putting it, taking it from a different language to another language, from one language to a different language, and keeping its essence, the true meaning of the word. That seems to me the most Herculean task possible in the universe. So how is that process? I'm, I'm very curious. The secret is Adam. He's oh. incredibly hardworking and accurate and gifted. He is just unique. You're being too modest. <laughs> and working together with you, of course, um, the primary version, as, as I always do, where I'm, I'm really a co-translator almost all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm able often to go back to the, the author though, or back to the person who, and this, having the author is, is, frees me. Can we, can that be changed? Can this, you know, what do you mean by this? What is the sense of that? When I'm working with um, a text on a page translated by somebody else, it's not like the, uh, they may be experts, but the author is truly the expert. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I don't think, by the way, it's just accuracy. I think it's also connotations. It's also tone of voice. There's a lot more that one has to attend to. And that, some of that is the kind of thing that I might, might miss or a translator might miss. When, you, when I ask out loud, when sometimes the passage is read out loud, that's where I can pick it up. And that is there a word, I'm sorry, is there a word perhaps where you, there's just not a translation that you have to select the closest word, or is it, that's never a case? I don't have an example right in mind. I mean, there's certain Romanian terms that I, I think we, we've, they're in the book and I've used all the time. The mm -hmm. Romanian plum brandy, suica. There's no way around it. You don't want to call it Slivovitz. You don't want to just call it plum brandy. You want to pick up not the flavor of the, the plum brandy, but the flavor of the language with it. Mm -hmm. um, corn, the, the pe peasant dish of mama liga. It's a, it's a great problem. And I've seen plenty of books make, make that Italian, polenta, which might mm -hmm. be just as accurate as cornmeal mush. Um, it's, it's boiled cornmeal that then is dried and often in the village they cut it with a wire and just take it from the, from the board on the table uh, mm -hmm. in some regions. Um, the, keeping some of those words, I happen to know both of those are in the OED so I feel better about using them. But sometimes I think the first time that Suica comes in up in this book I made a little detour and called it the first time plum brandy and then so-and-so picked up the glass of Suica to kind mm -hmm. of gloss it for the reader without glossing it. So I don't know that readers of poetry want notes and glosses all the time. I mean, that doesn't, doesn't, doesn't answer your question. It's, it's, it's trial and error, it keeps, it keeps going. I, there are times, I went back and forth with one of numbers of times. Well, you've made it a lot clearer than it was five minutes ago, sir. So I thank you for that. I, I have a be much better understanding. It was a wonderful answer. Thank you. Anyone else that have a question for our guests, please? Go ahead and unmute yourselves. Uh, yes, if I can. Certainly, please. Uh, hi, I'm Sean Cotter. Uh, it's nice to see Adam and Ioana. Uh, I'm wondering, Ioana, about writing the book? The, uh, you're, we're thinking still about kind of country sounds and country accents, uh, but your, you know, your poetic style is very modern and, and um, doesn't sound like 
you know, folkish poetry or of which there is so much, right? And you don't, were you, when you're writing your po poem, are you writing against uh, a style of representing country life or folklore in Romanian poetry? Yes, I think, I think you pose a question uh, which is interesting to me. Uh, I have a number of styles in which I write and I never uh, apply them as it were through saying, oh, now I decide to write folklore. Now I decide to write electronic poetry. I did these things very experimental and multimedia and so on. But uh, every substance will uh, ask for its form. And when I wrote this book, it was the first book that I wrote as, a, as narrative poetry. And I was really kind of lost because I needed to invent my shape. And I started writing it, I tell you, out of a kind of despair, seeing that these words disappear under the pressure of that regime. And I wanted to keep the memory. And then, uh, because I'm very fond of Chagall, I was inspired to rely on his structures, those kind of cubist structures that he does his uh, Russian country side in, in his paintings. You may know how he does that. And in a certain way, this is what gave me the courage of structuring this, this uh, text, you know, this book. When I write other things, like, you know, even um, right after this book, I wrote two books that I called electronic poetry. They were to, uh, you know, they were referring to, and even very early, to things which now are so familiar with computers and so on. And this is because I love physics and because I didn't think they have to be treated with rejecting these terms and rejecting scientific things. And so somehow that poetry is very different from this one and it refers to such a stuff. What it, that is to say, of course, this, this matter asks for its shape. So this is the best answer I can give you. I don't think I have anything to add to that. <laughs> and Ad, Adam had an occasion to translate various, uh, various things that I wrote. So some quite different. Yeah. Yeah. Adam, so, uh, may I ask you what, what your nati native language is? <laughs> my native, my first, very first. No, no, I know yours, uh, Joanna. I'm at, asking Adam. Uh, mine? Yeah. Um, English. It's English. I picked up Romanian actually um, partially when I was a Fulbrighter. I say partially because I'm better at reading. Uh, my pronunciation, it may be just uh, my own reluctance, but I'm, uh, I, 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 you know, stumble on words. I don't quite um, have the confidence. I know Sean, who, who just spoke, is excellent that way. But, uh, and of course a native Romanian is, but my sense of Romanian comes from the page and comes from working with writers and with uh, other co-translators. It, it, you know, I, I kind of work and work and work over the, the two texts together until in a sense, as I'm reading the English, I can also have a spool of the Romanian going along with it. Which, which helps in terms of rhythms and um, patterns of sound as they, as I, as, in as much as I can imitate. Not an I, if I may, I, first of all, I want to say how happy I am to see many people on my screen. I've uh, known you one, I, you are, I think we've known for over 25 years. I think. Yeah, and I carried, the, I carried one of her gifts with me in my immigrant suitcase. So I'm very happy to, yeah, it's still here in my living room. Um, the um, whistles, the bird whistles. Yeah, anyway, I am very happy to be here and congratulations, and I, congratulations. And I've known Adam, um, I think since 2009, we've co-translated a few books together. I am very impressed. I read uh, the summary and the comments uh, online. And I, I don't know, I, it's not a question. It, 
it's rather a comment. Uh, the way you summarize the book, Ivana, it has reminded me, I don't know how to translate it, apologies, of Baltagul, you know? Uh, yeah, it yeah. has set me both uh, in, in my mind, in uh, Baltagul in, and uh, a little bit in the universe of Napasta, you know, but especially Baltagul. And I, I do have kind of a question because I do not know the book. If uh, you are a text, uh, uh, would you say that it, it is inscribed? in this kind of mythology of Romania. I heard you about the words and I think that's lovely about the desire to preserve the words. Did I make it to ask my questions? <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, I do not deny that all of us were schooled with these classics, but mm -hmm. believe me that my substance comes from the grassroots. It really doesn't come from books. Of course, that when you have written or when you write, you are going to find yourself uh, like in maybe a line, you know, of the culture, of your culture. But frankly speaking, this was really genuine experience on the ground, hands-on. And I needed my protagonist in order to find myself because I was also an outsider. You know that when I went to that village, they called me German. They did not, I was an outsider. So I needed this voice who would be inside and outside, both this and that. And I was completely fascinated. And it was such a different world. And once more, the difference between the former Austrian Empire and the former Ottoman Empire, it was just a few miles. And my family was south and my birth was north. And when I was born, my uh, grandparents came on a sledge drawn by horses just a few miles to see me. So this is how close it is. And nevertheless, it is such different worlds. Thank you. Yeah, I, I didn't mean that it was inspired by, no. uh, by Baltar. I, I didn't mean that for a, for a lot at all. I, I don't know. I still hold in high regard Baltago, I might be wrong, but it oh, was... No. I agree, I agree. I agree, those are great classics, I do not deny that, no. And the pasta too. I was just thinking of the strong Romanian women. Amen. Of the strong women, that's the point, yeah. Women, that's what I was trying to say. Thank you. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your wonderful question. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Bogdan, you've been very patiently waiting to ask a question. If I'm pronouncing your name correct, I hope. Thank you. Um, I actually had a question mostly for Adam because, um, you know, when, you, when you're a native speaker of a language, you never quite figure it out how that language sounds to a, someone who's a foreigner, especially someone who has to translate and just get the every minute, you know, nuance and meaning of, of words that sometimes could be obscure. And I was curious, what does Romanian taste to you as a translator? Um, because, you, you know, you hear often when, you speak, especially if you're a native speaker and people are not really familiar with Romanian, which is unfortunately quite often, they hear that us saying da and they immediately assume it's a Slavic language. Um, and sometimes depending on the accent, you know, I've, I've heard people saying it's Italian or whatever, but just I'm curious to you, what, what, what does Romanian taste like? You know, it's, it's Italian enough in a way when uh, we were in Northern Italy in particular, and an Italian we don't know, but we could speak some Romanian and usually be understood. Um, it's, it's, you know, those Romans came and, con you, know, and con you know, and conquered and left their language. Uh, it, I, I don't see it as exotic anymore. It, it's, um, or in any sense, I see it as something that I've grown to accept as a part of me that I wish I could be more fluent in. I, I, it's, it's kind of ducking the answer. I don't have, I don't quite um, have a sense of it. It's not something, you know, we, we, you can like get a recipe book and learn to be Romanian by cooking, was it Mama Ligo or some, you know, Chorba or whatever. Um, it's, it comes from the experience. And before I translate it, I, I must say, I came at translation in a way backwards. We had been there as a Fulbrighters. Um, Nancy was on this and, and I, and we had, with our kids. And we 
drove many places in the country before I was asked to begin to translate by a colleague at the faculty in Bucharest uh, who, st- who went to Australia and then came back, Irina Pana. Um, and I sort of, in this process of knowing the geography and knowing the places, and I have in my mind a Bucharest too that, that is no longer there. Just like characters have of, of a place that in Romania that they grew up in and may have changed or the certainly the political system and the way of maneuvering in the among other people has quite changed greatly and I've been there for both of them in a way you know I can understand this perfectly without thinking of it as a language it's part of the way I accept Romania and Romanian and yeah like it, I could go into telling the old jokes about, yeah, the old communist jokes, and you want to hear them now. Um, the only way criticism could be done. Uh, it's, it, you sort of absorb it. I, I don't have a, you know, but you said, it, how, how does it feel? I don't know. I, I have, it's, you know, I, was, I grew up not wanting to learn other languages that I heard my parents and grandparents speaking. You know, a little touch of Polish, Yiddish, I always, as an only child, I felt cut off, I think. This is too much analysis, and I didn't want to hear other languages. But this is one that, I don't know, I turned on to. What can I say? uh, Adam, how is your cursing? What? How is your Romanian cursing? Uh, If you you can curse in Romanian. Well, I'm not going to, you know... I don't, I don't I think as a foreigner, I don't try very much, to be honest. You, see, you, you get know there are books written just with Romanian curses. Is what? I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, there are books written. Oh, yeah. Books, hundreds of pages just with Romanian curses. Oh, yes. That's, that's true in a lot of Romance language curses. And some yeah. some, uh, some statisticians uh, claim that Romania is one of the countries with most curses. Well, they're much more colorful than they are in English. That's for sure. Uh, anyone else have a question, please? We're going to have to finish um, up with Yes, uh, yes, if we may congratulations again to both of you on, on uh, capturing uh, so well the, the, the spirit in, uh, of, of the place that, uh, um, that was, I guess, researched uh, originally in Romanian. And my first question would be for... Um, Ioana, um, uh, your, could you t- talk to us about the original research uh, in, in developing the main character and the narrative and, and how that uh, character evolved through this process of translation and over time uh, through the prism of, of who you are now and uh, um, how, how that has, uh, has transformed um, the narrative itself, the work itself. Um, well, I I uh, hardly can call this research because it was a life experience. It was many, many vacations that I spent with my grandmother in this village, uh, being astounded at what I could see around me and uh, being very close to this uh, seamstress. So uh, I, I do not say that anything changed here because it's like a bubble. Uh, what I could discover in time and even a few months ago, like before, just before COVID, I was there once more and I could see elements of resilience. With all these many changes, with all this much time, uh, you see how people behave, move and speak in the same way when they go to make the hay. And instead of having oxen or horses or donkeys, they have uh, an automobile and they still are the same. There is something interesting about this resilience. So what I mean to say is that if there were some changes, which were maybe not so huge, they were only in order to better, uh, like, you know, to clean a little bit of picture because uh, English is an extraordinary, an extraordinary way to really like trim off the fat, you know. This is not a BS language. It's a very clear one and it's more clear than any Romance language. So here we are, you see. It's not that I changed my vision. 
uh, and uh, the book is more a question mark than an answer. Mm -hmm. Of course, I try to preserve, but it is there is so much mystery in human life, and yes, there is a there is a question mark lingering. Let me. Can I add something? I've had Ro uh, not Roma not Juana so much, but Romanian poets say, "Do I have to use uh, gender for this noun? Do I have to specify?" And in English, of course, you do especially when the pronoun is referring back. Uh, so that there are things about translating into English that actually change the, the possibilities for um, openness in a text. The other thing though, is that in Juana's other book, which I think we translate, which we translated first, which I translated um, was Triumphal Paparude, which was a hard word to translate. I, I finally just, I think we, we went over this and over this triumph of the water witch. And it's more like vignettes that move um, through the same kind of village, but across the Carpathians from where this village is. And the, the uh, book, I think the details were wonderful. They are here too. But there was a time when Juana was honored in the town where this took place, Rishnov. And I was there, she invited us. I and my wife, Nancy, we went with Juana and we, I kept walking around and saying, where's so-and-so's house? The houses were all mentioned. Where's, where's the bull over the door? Where's, you know, I was living the book, the town page by page. It's the opposite of translation maybe, but you know, you internalize these things as a translator and as a reader and it, it's a triumph for the author. Thank you, Adam. I'm sorry this hour spun by where our Zoom is about to disconnect us after oh. an hour. Glory, do you want to thank you so much for your wonderful questions? Thank you, Adam and Yona. Just wonderful answers. Glory, do you want to um, say goodnight? End it? I, yes, I do. Um, first of all, here is the book again. And you can see the picture that uh, Iwana talked about. And um, this is for sale since this is a book launch. And uh, it's available at small press distribution or at the lostbookshelf.com, which is part of Chervena Barva Press. And I want to thank Iwana and Adam so much. Um, this book means so much to me and it was such an honor to publish it um, by you both. And um, I can't thank you enough. And tonight was so wonderful. Um, so thank you so much. And thank you everyone um, for coming tonight. It, it means a lot to me. And I just want to say hello to Diana. I met her through Flavia Cosma at her festival. <laughs> so it's nice to see you here and everyone here. So um, thank you so much. And thank you so much. Thank this you. is a lot of work. And we appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. We'll be in touch. And um, I guess that's it. So good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. <laughs>